All right, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss uh, well further into curve sketching and look at the do examples with part two of this one on uh, the the guidelines of curve sketching, which is domain intercepts, basically symmetry, asymptotes, uh, increase, decrease intervals, uh, max, local max, min, concavity, inflections. So basically, do it, get all this information, sketch your curve. I showed in my earlier video. I did this in my earlier video. Yeah, you could you could see uh, the example I did in this in, in part one of this uh, this series. And you can all see my earlier videos on basically uh, this the, uh, going through the guidelines and uh, based summarizing all these. But so now let's do example of this one, part two. Uh, y, y is equal to x squared divided by root x plus one. First thing we do is part A is the domain, and in this case here you can see that it's a, it's um, x x is valid for all numbers except at the bottom can't equal well it has to be greater than zero in this case because you can see that. With the square root thing, the x plus one has to be greater than zero because you can't have a square root of a negative. You can see my earlier video on that to uh, clarify that and explain further. But basically, you have something like this: x plus one has to be greater than zero, so then x is greater than negative one. Just shift it over, and this is the domain here. This so basically x is only defined for all numbers greater than negative one. So now, uh, if we look at if we look at the intercepts, x and y intercepts, you can see from here, uh, I just set it. Well, as uh, to get the y intercept, we just put x equals zero in this case, and this is going to be zero. And also to get the uh, x intercepts, you set y is equal to zero, and this just equals x squared x plus one. But then cancel this out, you're going to have x equals zero. Basically, the x and y intercepts are just at zero and zero. So this is only this is the only point where they cross both intersects. So now part C, we'd look at symmetry, and in this case, uh, well, there isn't any symmetry actually, so we'll just go none. You could uh, verify it for yourself, uh, but this, uh, I don't see any inside this one. So now part D, we have to look at all the asymptotes, and then to find a horizontal asymptote, we basically take the limit as uh, well best x approaches infinity. In this case, on the positive side, because it's uh, well, the domain is greater than negative one, so there, we don't we can't go to negative infinity, and this is just. So you have a limit like this one here, and basically to simplify this one, you could times the top and bottom by the highest power at the bottom, which is, what well, you can look at it, it's going to be root x divided by 1 over root x in this case, and it simplifies to, well, yeah, the, the top is going to be, well, x squared minus, so you're going to have something like x squared minus 1 over 2, because that's just, you just uh, subtract with powers here, and then you can bring this inside of this, so this could be uh, root over x over x plus 1 over x, because when you take it out, uh, you just square to put it inside the square root. And then this looks something like this. This cancels to 1, and if you put infinity in this case, this goes to 0. Well, this is just 1. And this top one is going to be, well, positive power. It goes to infinity, so infinity. So our limit is going to equal to infinity here, and this is basically no horizontal asymptote. Because uh, if you remember, horizontal asymptote is if it, the limit reaches a certain number, but this is infinity, so it doesn't really reach any number. So now to find the vertical asymptotes here, well, we see where the function is not defined, and that's it's not defined well at at the endpoint of where it's um, well, it's greater than negative one. So we look at approaching negative one, which is not defined from the right side. So we take the limit as x approaches negative 1 because it's greater than it and from the right side is not defined from the left side see what the limit reaches so we get x squared over x plus 1 here now when uh, you see that the, the top here this one's always going to be positive in this case when you put any number inside and when you look at the bottom here uh, this one x plus 1 well, because this is the number is always greater than the, this one, where you were pushed from the right side, this is going to be greater than zero, the, than zero here, or it's going to be positive. And then, the, as you can see here, when you actually reaches it, you're going to have a a zero, like something divided by zero, and this is actually just goes to infinity, but in this case, positive infinity. So this is a vertical asymptote right here. So now when we look at part uh, D of, I uh, no, part E of the guidelines, we look at intervals of increase, decrease, basically see where the derivative changes. And to do that, first we got to get a derivative. Well, we know this the function is x squared over so root x plus 1. Uh, you could just rewrite this so we could uh, apply product rule pretty easily without having to memorize quotient rule. It's so like I showed in my previous video, just put this on the top, x plus 1. This is going to be yeah negative 1 over 2 here. Uh, you can just write it like that. And then, the, and then you could do the derivative 
you know, I'm using a product and chain rule. So right here, the derivative is going to be equal to two x the derivative of this times this uh, times the one on the right side, and then plus well x squared and the derivative of this one, which is just negative one over two x plus one. Uh, this one subtracted by one in this case is going to be negative three over two and then to derivative inside just one so we just using chain rule let's just ignore that so we have something like this and if you uh, basically rearrange this you're gonna get something like like this here like uh, yeah, 2x divided by this uh, minus x squared divided by 2 which is right here it's a negative here's x plus 1 power of 3 over 2 and then uh, to make uh, basically make the same common denominator we would times both by x plus 1 and then times x plus one on the bottom on the on the this one here, so we're not changing it just so that it looks something like so. Then th this one right here, uh, one over two divided by uh, yeah one divided by two to the powers. When you add to this powers of this one's one over one, this becomes three over two. So we're gonna get something like this. So you get uh, this one. Oh, I forgot the common denominator. You have the two there as well. So you would top uh, times the top and bottom by two in this case. So we got something like this. If you keep simplifying this one by expanding this, you'll get you'll get something like this one here, and then you could cancel the x squareds in this case. You could take this out. This will be uh, just finally simplified too. So now to find intervals of increase, decrease, we'll just write this is y prime. Uh, well, first we gotta get the critical numbers in this case, and that's when uh, the derivative is equal to zero. So we set it equal to zero, and then we get three x plus four x uh, in this case two. So no, I forgot to add a three in this, all these cases. Is three, not a two. And then this is a three over two here. And then uh, right here uh, with zero, these this is cancelled, so we're going to be left with well, uh, this is going to be zero is equal to three x squared plus four x. And then if you simplify this one further, this will be equal to well, take the x out. We're going to have x three x plus four. So we got critical points at x equals to zero, and then if we rearrange this one here, we're gonna get three x plus four is equal to zero. These are the cases when it could be zero, and then if you rearrange, rearrange this, x equal to negative four over three. But this one is well, this is uh, well less than uh, negative one here, and this is basically not in a domain. So then this is not a critical point, and the only critical point is at x equals to zero, and we saw the intercept, this one is basically at x equals zero, we know that y is equal to zero here, and this is the only critical point here. And then if we were to basically draw a little a quick uh, overview of how the graph is looking so far, we know that this is the critical point here, and then this is at x equals negative one, is the vertical asymptote, and this is where it's only defined for this case here, so we're going to get we're gonna check if it's increasing or decreasing between this this interval right here and this one too, where this is x greater than zero, and this one is basically x is less than zero, greater than negative one. So if we look at part one here, where negative one is less than x less than zero, I mean greater than negative one uh, zeros, and then we know that uh, derivative in this case y prime which basically equals to x. So when we look at this one, if you put a number between these two values, let's say something like negative 0.5, if you put it in here, well, this this one, this part right here is gonna be positive, because three times, uh, let's say, point, negative 0.5 plus four is gonna be greater than zero. But this one here is gonna be negative, because it's a negative number in this case. And this one here, since it's greater than negative one, is gonna be positive, but then we're left with negative here at the end. So we're gonna have uh, y prime is less than zero, or negative. And thus, this is decreasing from uh, the first interval. And if we look at the second one right here, uh, where x is greater than zero, if we look at the, just look at just by looking at this function, if you put x in, in every single little category here, greater than zero, it's always going to be positive. So we're going to have y prime is greater than zero or increasing. And now, if we look at the next category, yeah. So when we look at part f, which is local max and minimum, we could see from above where as you can see, at the critical point of x equals to zero here, uh, it changes from, well, you have uh, y prime is less than zero when it's x is less than zero in this case. And then when x is greater than zero, it's uh, increasing in this case. So, so it changes here from a going down to a increasing. So this is a local minimum here. And this is uh, basically the first derivative test here.
and this value here is at 0, 0, where our intercept is, where x equals 0. So now when we look at uh, base to part G, concavity and points of inflection, but well, we have to see if it's got concaving up or basically concaving down or, or both or switching up or whatnot. So we have to get the second derivative. Basically, first we uh, look at this, the first derivative, which was which was this over here. I just want to rearrange it again, just to make it easier to do derivative. So just rewrite it like this one here. Divide this both uh, by two here, and then do using product rule. We get the second derivative is equal to. It's basically uh, well, just looking at this one here. Derivative of that is gonna be. We bring the two down. They cancel, so we're gonna get three x. That's it. Just three x plus. In this case here, this is just going to be 2 in this case. Because uh, the 2's cancel, 2x will be 2. And then times it by x plus 1, negative 3 over 2. Plus, in this case, 3 over 2x squared plus, well, this simplifies it, 2x. Times the derivative of this case, this would just be negative 3 over 2. Times it by... Well, x plus 1 to the power of negative 5 over 2. You just uh, you would subtract 2 over 2, or 1 from this case. So we get something like this, and then if you rearrange it, you'll get something like this one here, just 3x plus 2 divided by this power of 3 over 2. And in this case here, I just multiplied, well, the negative on the outside, and then I multiplied 3 over 2 on both, so it's 9 over 4. And then the similarly, this one, the 2's cancel, be 3x. And then if we times this again by the common denominator, uh, just to make it so a common denominator, so we just go x plus 1. And this x plus 1 in this case, just so that this adds up to 5 over 2. Yeah, so basically we'll get something like this over this, uh, in this case. So this is a negative, because it's uh, negative on both sides. And then if you expand this out here, this will just be, well, this times this times this, plus this times this. Be 3x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 2, and then subtract by 9, 9 divided by 4x squared minus this. See this cancels right here, and then when we uh, basically you could subtract these for uh, this two right here, this is just if you look at the common denominator, this would be 12 over 4 x squared minus. This is just for this this case subtract by this would be 9 over 4 in this case x squared. This is just be equal to 3 x squared over 4. And this would just equal to. Now to find out when it's concaving upwards or downwards, well, first of all, we have to see if there's an inflection point that's basically near wherever the concavity changes. Well, if we set this to equal to zero, let's set it to equal to zero. We're gonna well, this this just cancels on the on the bottom in this case, and we're gonna get basically um, three. Well, just times uh, by four on both sides. Three x squared plus plus 8x plus 8 is equal to 0. And this uh, this little the top part is just uh, hard to see whether it's going to be concave up or not. So what I mean by this is if you look at four values of x is greater than 0, then in this case we're going to have we're going to have such cases that that the uh, second derivative is always going to be greater than 0. And this is concave up because you could just look at uh, you could look at this one here. This one's always positive for the domain. It's always positive. And this one here is, is, is there's no negative number, so there's no negative here. It's always going to be positive. So then this would, yeah, this would be greater than, yeah, th yeah, this would be positive as well. So for this case here, so what the case that we don't know is, uh, is when x is less than zero and less than one. So uh, and in order for it to go to be concave down anywhere, it needs to equal to zero at least once. So we have to look at this function here. And see when it equal to zero. But for the domain, this is the domain in this case, the the leftmost part of it. We just plug in negative one in this case. So we're gonna have three times negative one squared plus eight times negative one plus eight. This just equals to well, these just cancel. This is just negative uh, eight plus eight. So we're just gonna be left with well, this is one. So we're left with three, and which is greater than zero. So for the domain, it never uh, is never concave down. So we could just write that it's concave up the whole way. And now if we put all the information together, we can sketch the curve here. We just draw the axis x and y, and we know that the intercept at 0, 0, and it's a local minimum, and that the, we have a vertical asymptote, and this basically where the domain is defined at x equals 2. This is x equals to negative 1 here. So we, have, we know that the limit goes to infinity here. And it goes down here. It's, it's it's concave up the entire way. So it's gonna hit hit this, 
and there's no inflection point here. I'll just write down in this case. Yeah, there's no inflection point because the concavity never changes. This is always concave up, and then it goes to infinity basically. So it's something like it looks something like this in this case, and it goes to uh, basically infinity. And this is at zero zero is the local minimum, and it's it is also a concave up everywhere. So now if we were to graph in Google, just to make sure we, we're doing it right, we just type it out, x to the square divided by square root x plus 1. And see how the graph looks like here. Zoom out a bit more. Let's just change this. So make it this way better. So yeah, it looks something like this. So it's kind of like our curve here. So it's asymptote at negative 1 here. So you can see it's approaching, as it approaches negative 1, it goes to higher and higher, it goes to basically infinity. And then as you can see here, there's a local minimum here, and it goes something like that. So it's something like this, but this is a bit off scale, just write that down, not to scale. Because uh, yeah, this one's a bit more accurate, so it looks something like this, and it looks just like our curve here. Well, that's uh, all for today. Actually, it's running out, out of time. Next time I'll do uh, part 3 of this series, a look at... Uh, this graph, maybe uh, these if I have time. But that's all for today. You can download these notes as always in the Dropbox link below. If I don't have the Dropbox link below, just let me know. Or if it doesn't work, just let me, just let me know and I'll uh, fix that up. And that, but that's all for today. Hopefully you learned. And um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.